Hello everyone, welcome back to Urch. Jameson, Alex here. Next video in the Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft series. And this time, we're talking about survivors. Those that have dealt with a terrifying traumatic experience, but have lived to tell the tale. These aren't normal adventurers that have gone through a traumatic experience. These are just everyday people yes. that have somehow survived and they have used that to try to strengthen themselves and harden themselves to keep breathing. <laughs> yes, <pretty laughs> Essentially. Much. So, before we get started in the video, we have not one, but two giveaways going on at the moment. First off is a D&D Beyond version of Van Richten's Guide to Revolve book itself. Yes. You gotta like, subscribe to the channel, make a comment down below saying... Something interesting. Uh, also on top of that, there is the full players bundle, which is four books, yes. all coming, also coming from D&D Beyond. Same concept goes, you know, like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below the video. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers, which to date, it's getting close, we're getting close. Hurry that process along yes. by subscribing to the channel. A lot of people watching not subscribing, so why, Fix not, it. why not get that chance to win as well? Fix it. Starts off by telling you different ways you can use your said survivors yes. down in there. That you can, they can be in storytellers telling you how they recounting events yeah, it's maybe. like ah, how, how do they get here they're they're, they're the the ones that kind of kick off maybe a horror campaign of your own yeah, uh, like side campaign yeah, yeah side campaign kind of thing and this also says you know this is the my favorite thing about the early parts is survivors provide players front row seats to important historic events it's one thing to hear about the massacre at castle ravenloft falling strahd van zarevich transformation to vampire but it's another to play it yourself yes so you, you know basically become one of those people talks about the mind taker mists and how it kind of inter interacts with everything within the do domains of dread uh you know terrible freedom delightful doom little headliner there it talks about what it's like to you know, you're, yes, you are still alive and breathing, but you also know the impending problem of what you face as being a survivor of a traumatic event, a scary event, that nothing uh, is, is uh, as it should be, and you're in a bad way. So if you think of back to Tasha's book, where they en enlist sidekicks as an option, this is kind of in the same vein, but even not quite as powerful even as a sidekick. Yeah, These yeah. are less than that, because they really cap out in their level up, Far yeah, as they go. Yep. And there are four basic stat blocks with apprentice, disciple, sneak, and squire. So think of that as baby wizard, baby cleric, baby rogue, baby fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> like really, really baby. And, and one thing, too, I want to mention as well, because uh, when me and Oscar were talking about this beforehand, we're talking about if you like come up upon someone who's telling you the story and you're thinking, well, how could this person, how would you play as this person and his friends? Right. If that person's still alive, then they die, like in the side campaign? Well, we have some thoughts for that, which I'll mention at the end. But also, um, it does mention on here, it says Mind Maker Mist, Mind Taker Mist. Yes. Which talks about how sometimes with the mists, it can drag, like, players' minds from their bodies and, like, put them in other bodies. So maybe this is happening, you're experiencing something else that's happening right now through someone else's eyes. Yes. So, like, it's a way to say, even if this character dies or whatever that you still like return and get shunted back to your body after it happens kind of thing. So give some reasons as to how that might happen. Yep. And not and not be out of place for the setting. Right. It doesn't feel forced and, and things like that. Yes. And then actually getting to the creation of the survivor, as Alex said, there are the four options. And basically with these, um, the best way to go about this is probably to just uh, look at the stat blocks originally first. So there's uh, it has the four different stat blocks and you essentially choose one. Um, to start off with, and with the apprentice, you're you know it's these are all very simple. Yes. Okay. So you have your apprentice. He's got his ten armor class, his seven hit points. <sighs> yikes. Um, and then you have your quarter staff <laughs> attack. You can cast burning hands twice a day. Yes. Um, and then you have firebolt can trip. So a way to get some extra stuff going on there. And then spell casting, you can cast minor illusion at will and grease twice a day. Grease. So, Got to be I a mean, little bit creative with well, that, this. Well, that's all. Let's think about like, okay, how do you get away from something? You cast grease. Right. right. <laughs> so whatever's chasing you, if it's on foot at least, chase the slip and fall. Grease, and, is, grease is also flammable. Yeah. <laughs> DM discretion. But yes, yes. It would make sense. I'm just saying firebolt, grease. Right. I feel like they're, they're trying to put that out there. Yeah. Um, and then we have also sneak, which is the rogue, essentially. Which is, we, Alex talked about this before, which is strange because 
it has the highest armor class of yeah. all of them, which it's, is 13. Yeah. Um, it does say they have a shield in parentheses, I guess, but sure. Okay. All right. Um, nine hit points, sure. They have their, of course, their sleeping hand stealth. Makes sense. Um, they just have their dagger and disengage, a bonus action. So very simple we're talking here. Yes. Uh, then we have the disciple, 11 AC shield, nine hit points again. You have your perception and religion on there. You have your mace attack. You have your sacred flame with a DC 11 dexterity saving throw. Woo-wee. And then we have your spellcasting. You can cast guidance. Pretty pretty solid. And cure wounds twice a day. So the cure wounds is going to be huge. Because people, <laughs> no one has any health. Yeah. Because so. <laughs> cure wounds literally going to automatically cap somebody's health. It, it's going to be close, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's not, a... D- a D8 plus one, that's... Yeah, the, it's going to be... It's yeah. going to be real one, that feels bad, but even still, it's still like 20% of someone's <laughs> health. So, yeah. still pretty solid. It's going to be impactful anyway. Right, and then last we have the Squire, which is basically your fighter, which has an AC of 12. Again, why is it less than a rogue? I don't know. Uh, but 11 hit points, so we have... You gain two hit points over the sneak, but you have one less AC, so one hit point... Or two hit points versus one AC. <sighs> that's Wizard's justification there, I guess. Cool. Um, and then you have just a long sword attack, and you can shove... While wielding a shield. As a bonus action. Yes, as a bonus action, which is does make a difference. Yep. So those are your four options. And then what it's going to do is, as you level up, you can level up to second and third level. doesn't say anything beyond those, because you only get abilities at second level and third level. You also going to gain some hit die on there. So when you level up, just like you would normally level up, you get your hit die on there, yep. roll it, get your bonus with your con mod, or if you're an apprentice, minus with your con mod. Uh, so, yeah, yikes. Um... <laughs> And then basically, uh, mm. um, there are, I believe, it's two, four, six, eight abilities available. Uh, each one has their own unique ability. Yep. And then there are four general abilities that you can choose from as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, with this, we'll just go through the general ones first. Why not? Yeah. So the first general ability that you could get when you level up, you get one at level two and one at level three. So, so that's the, it. Yeah. So that's you're it. gonna get half of them. Four, well, you're gonna get you're gonna get your own. You're probably gonna want to get your unique ones. Yeah. That makes sense. So you're going to get probably one of these. So Adrenaline Surge is the first one. At the start of your turn, you can choose one creature you can see within 30 feet. Until the start of your next turn, you are frightened of that creature, and your walking speed is doubled. So you if have to move away from it, but you get double your speed. So if you really need to get away from something, it's like, it's... That's, that scares me. Yeah, it's interesting. Because <laughs> it, it is, it's weird because you're actually giving yeah. yourself the frightening condition, which is kind of yeah. cool. It's interesting. Yeah, for sure. But thematically, it fits. Yes. That, sure. that, ma- that matters. Uh, and the second right. option is Desperate Scream. Whenever you make a saving throw, you can summon your desire to live into a desperate scream. You can advantage on the saving throw, and the scream is audible up to 100 feet away. You can scream in this way twice, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So Advantage on a saving throw twice a day. Yeah. The, the scary thing is the 100-foot audible, so if there's anything else around, <laughs> you could be alerting it. So. Yeah. yeah. It's at your own risk. Yeah, sure. That, that, that's, that's a very important thing to have. <laughs> yes. Uh, then the two more simple ones, you get resilience as a choice. Choose one ability score and gain proficiency in saving throws so of that chosen ability. Makes sense. The other one is skillful. You gain proficiency in two skills of your choice. Yes. Pretty straightforward. Yes. Then uh, the unique abilities that you can gain. Uh, first, the apprentice. We have magical talent. You learn one first level spell of your choice from the wizard spell list. It must be a spell you don't already know. You can cast a spell once with this talent, and you regain the ability when you do finish a long rest. You can select this talent more than once. Each time you do, you must choose a different spell. So, yeah. if you, you wanted want to go just go. heavy caster, you could just a heavy caster. You get two first level spells. Well, yeah, <laughs> you can cast once, once a day. day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it might be better than picking, you know, your two skill proficiencies. You know, whatever. Best you know, if somebody else. Let's make do that. Yeah, somebody else in the party's already got that. You mean, right. yeah. Um, and then for your sneak on here, you have slip away. Whenever a creature you can see within five feet of you hits you with an attack roll and deals damage to you with the attack, you can use your reaction to give yourself resistance against that damage. You can then move up to half your speed without provoking opportunity attacks. Once you use this talent, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. Seems good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like you get a free disengage and uh, uncanny. Yeah, So pretty much. Combined. The other two left are Divine Guidance, obviously for the Disciple Survivor. Gain a first level spell of choice from the Cleric spell list. If it, it must be a spell you don't already know. Cast a spell once a day. Same thing like with the Magical Talent for the Apprentice. You can, again, just like it, you can take that ability more than once and choose a different spell each time you do so. And finally is the Sacrificing Shield for the Squire. When a creature you can see makes an attack against a target 
You can see within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to become the target of the attack instead. If you're wielding a shield, you can reduce that damage by 1d10. Once you use this talent, you can't do it again to finish a short or long rest. So once per day, you can kind of intercept damage and reduce it because yeah. you're hardier, which still makes no sense. As, Not much. I mean, yeah, you've got you got less AC than the sneak does. you got two more health, but you can you can intercept that attack for somebody else. Yes. <laughs> but you do get to reduce. Right. Reduce the damage, so that by itself can be huge. One, and then you die. <laughs> it's it's, it's possible. But but you, but you got more health than everybody else does. That's to true. Make up for That's it. true. <laughs> Extra two for sure. Um, so those are all of the options for the survivors and all of the abilities that are gained through their level ups. Um, just some last commentary on here, yep. uh, as we were talking about before. Um, this could be. I saw some people commenting on some of the other videos about Van Richten's talking about. How D and D five E is really not suited for like a horror type setting because you, all the player characters are like superheroes and they're so powerful and all this. Yeah. And like those are very good points. So if you really wanted to bring back Solution. some of that horror, you can bring in these survivor characters yeah. because you are going to be in a very tough spot. It's yeah. like bringing back the fear of like low level play. Yeah. Um, with a little bit of a mix up on yeah. here. Just a very simple. Or and and because I mentioned it earlier as a reference, if you wanted to go a little bit more heavy, make it really scared, make your characters able to do a little bit more than this, you could go with the sidekick route. As right. far as that that amount of power, if you wanted right, your right. characters to have a little bit more than what they get here, but yeah. not be you know like superhero full right. full powerful, you know exactly. look, look at that. Consider that option as well as a yeah. a middle ground between. Yeah, that's a good one. Would also work if you want to throw something real nasty, right. scary. Because that's the thing with these with these characters <laughs> being so low. Uh, Level basically like level one characters pretty much pretty much yeah at the beginning, um, we're talking about CR anything is yeah. going to be able to kill these yeah I mean, I any, like anything, one, anything are going to be terrifying yeah any, anything above like a CR half is going to be a deadly encounter it could it could be it could, in, in terms of how they yeah, how their base yeah, yeah it could definitely be because yeah. they could kill someone in one or two turns especially if they have multi attack yeah I mean they're not necessarily kill them outright but knock them down yeah they're going unconscious not turn. a whole lot of ways to get people up. Because, you know, you have your cure wounds twice a day, so yeah. you're going to be in a tough spot if someone goes down, you know? So, yep. um, definitely adds some fear and urgency. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about, too, is if you think about running even, like, an alien campaign. Yeah. Like, you're on a ship or something, and there's, like, an aberration on the ship. And maybe it's just, like, a big, like, cargo ship or something. And, uh, yeah, you got one of those bad boys, and you can't really fight it, so you're using no. your stuff like that. No, he'll eat you. <laughs> yeah, like your journal insert just ruined. Yeah. Or find ways to trap it or trick it or yep. whatever until you can find a way to get rid of it. Or or, or there's or a big like a predator scenario. There's a big ooze crawling around yeah, the ship. slowly. Yeah. You know where you it's at, it. but you can't, but it's endlessly chasing It's endlessly chasing you. Yes. No rest for the weary. Um, and then again, I wanted to bring this up again too because as uh, we were talking about at the beginning of the video, is uh, if you had someone who was recounting their story. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. that's kind of funny. Is you could, and if something, like, say you play as this character who's telling you, you stumble upon some old man who's battle-torn and everything, like, fresh wounds, and he's like, let me tell you exactly what happened, and then you go, doo -doo -doo -doo, and you, like, play as the, his experience yeah. with your party, and say that character dies. In the story. In the story, and they're like, well, how are they talking to him then? And then you come back to the end where they're talking to him, and either an alien pops out of his chest and he was like being controlled, or you have something like the Oblix. Yes. Where you notice, like everyone has a perception check or a passive perception, you notice a thin red strand coming from the back of his foot uh -huh. and he's being controlled. And it's not really him anymore. It's they're trying the to trap Oblix. you to be the next victim. Type yes. Thing. So the story continues. You could do some interesting stuff with there as well. So that was kind of cool. But. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Yes. So if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification to know when our new videos are coming out. Always love to read your comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.